Five years ago, smartphone companies were still busy trying to figure out what kind of smartphone you need. Do you want Android on it or some other operating system? Should the screen be bigger or smaller than five inches? And do you need features such as 3D cameras or 3D screens? But Xiaomi decided that your average Android smartphone is already good enough. And it's instead the business model that needs some innovation. I'm Martin from Tech Qatar. This is the third episode of my The Story Behind series where I dive deeper into tech trends. And let's see how well that's working out for them. Before we start, I have heard so many people butcher the name of this poor, poor company. So let me set this straight. It's called Xiaomi. Xiaomi, right. And it means, uh, literally translated, at least, small rice. Or if you put it together, it means a millet. Anyway, in 2011, the first Xiaomi phone, the Mi 1, was launched. And we didn't know just how big of a deal it would be. Before it launched, Xiaomi made a name for itself with its excellent customized Android skin called Mi UI that enthusiasts like me could install on basically any popular smartphone as a custom ROM. I ran it on my Galaxy S2, by the way. So the Mi 1 at first just seemed to be a vehicle for Mi UI, a way for Xiaomi to control not just the software, but for the first time ever also the hardware experience. And then it all exploded. Xiaomi turned the Chinese smartphone market upside down. Within just four years, it grew from being a small custom ROM maker to becoming number one in the Chinese smartphone market according to sales. It beat out Samsung, Apple, and local competitors like Huawei with insane growth. At the end of 2014, an investment valued the company at 46 billion USD, making it the world's most valuable tech startup, which is especially impressive because we've hardly ever seen hardware companies grow this quickly. Just to compare, Nokia's handset business was bought by Microsoft that same year for 7.2 billion, which is just 15% of the value of Xiaomi. Founder Lei Jun became the 23rd richest person in China, and even the former head of Android, Hugo Barra, left Google to work for Xiaomi. The company and its momentum seemed unstoppable. Until 2015 came, and the company was reluctant to release sales figures. Turns out that was because instead of the promised 100 million devices, they sold only 70 million phones. While that is still pretty impressive, it is nowhere near what people expected from Xiaomi. And given that the company isn't publicly traded, it is pretty hard to get a clear picture of its financial performance. But analysts seem to agree that 2016 is going to get even worse. In the first quarter of this year, it fell to third place in China with a 9% decrease in market share year on year. And then a 38% fall in the second quarter brought it to the fourth place behind Huawei, Oppo, and now even Vivo. Ouch, that leadership didn't last very long, did it? Well, okay, the company isn't failing, but something has clearly gone unexpectedly wrong. And to understand what that is, we have to look at what made Xiaomi successful in the first place. So you've probably heard this before, but Xiaomi's biggest achievement was making really good phones really cheap. And this seems to be a common thing nowadays with phones like the OnePlus 3, the ZTE Axon, and the Honor 8. But all of these phones are just replicating the business model that Xiaomi invented. So here's the core concept of what they came up with. Apparently, manufacturing a high-end smartphone usually costs somewhere between 150 to 250 USD. And yet, traditionally, flagship phones usually retail for around six to 800 USD. That means two thirds of the selling price are actually things like marketing, warehousing, R&D, and distribution costs, or if the company is lucky, then also some kind of profit. That sounds crazy, but if you do the math, it really isn't. I know from experience that retailers alone, especially ones with physical stores, can easily add at least 40 to 50% on top of your manufacturing costs, for example. Then those billboards, the TV ads, and the one or two years of warranty and whatever software updates you get, they all don't pay for themselves. And yet Xiaomi found a way to take that overhead and reduce it massively to the point where it sells their flagship phones for around three to 400 USD. That means half price, which begs the question, how do they do it? Well, for a start, they got rid of distributors and sold through their own website. So they can save those 40, 50% and the cost of maintaining physical stores. Then they got rid of warehousing costs by selling small quantities in flash sales that are basically always guaranteed to sell out. 
This way they can also avoid stocking up huge quantities of a phone just to find out that the demand isn't really as big as expected. And finally, they also got rid of big, expensive ads and simply focused on the much cheaper social media, PR and word of mouth advertisement from their carefully nurtured community. So the whole idea was to create phones that are so cheap and so good that they'll create so much hype that the company won't have to advertise them and won't have to put them into stores in front of people to buy, but simply let the people come to them and buy those phones in flash sales. So this is reversing the whole process. Instead of push marketing, this is pull marketing because the company is not pushing those phones down people's throats with ads and whatnot but it is creating something that will pull those people in. And it clearly worked because at least initially, Xiaomi butchered the competition until two things happened. First, companies figured out that copying the Xiaomi business model, which was at the heart of the success, isn't all that hard. Huawei created its Honor brand to compete directly against Xiaomi, a bunch of people from Oppo decided to launch OnePlus with a very similar business model, ZTE got on board with the Exxon line, Le TV launched their aggressively priced and advertised Le Echo models, Alcatel and Meizu entered the game too, and basically so did every other Chinese manufacturer. So Xiaomi suddenly got a taste of its own medicine, and with so many companies trying to fight on price, it's just impossible to be the cheapest or the best value for more than a few days. And it's nearly impossible to generate enough hype for any product just by being good and cheap. Because in China, there's a crazy new phone launched with a crazy price tag every few days. And this means that Xiaomi, who didn't invest into building very unique phone features or a very strong lifestyle brand, for example, suddenly has no real way to differentiate itself. Second, the Chinese smartphone market changed dramatically. In the last two years, growth has slowed from 62.5% to a near complete stop at just 2.5%. And instead, it is the average selling price of phones that is going higher and higher. It's up from 207 to 257 USD in just two years. That means two years ago, the smartphone market in China was very heavily influenced by first time buyers, whereas now, it's influenced more by people who are upgrading. It is called upselling. And obviously Xiaomi's focus on being affordable doesn't necessarily help here. Instead, Huawei, Oppo and Vivo have all focused on creating a premium brand, something aspirational. They're sponsoring the living crap out of every celebrity and TV show. And apparently it is working. People don't just want value anymore, but the feeling of luxury. The phone isn't just a tool anymore, it is a lifestyle item and a social statement and Xiaomi isn't doing all too well in this light. So the Chinese smartphone market was the main growth engine for Xiaomi, but obviously it is becoming a very tough one for them. And as the company feels this, they are trying to diversify. They've always had other product categories, but recently they have added everything from a Segway competitor to laptops, rice cookers, and they'll soon even have drones. It's unclear whether this will work or not, but reports showed that smartphones still make up over 90% of the company's income, so I wouldn't expect a radical change here, at least not in the near future. Then the company has also started its expansion outside of China. They have mainly laid their eyes on especially India and Brazil, as those countries have huge populations, they are price sensitive, and there are many first-time users, something Xiaomi is quite comfortable with. Since the company doesn't release financial statements, it is impossible to see how well this is working, but seeing how Oppo and Huawei have overtaken them on a global scale, it seems like the foreign growth is nowhere near big enough to offset the Chinese slump. And given how Xiaomi's business model was built on the incredibly sophisticated and cheap Chinese e-commerce system, it is questionable whether it is even possible for Xiaomi to replicate its success abroad when the internet infrastructure of countries like India and Brazil is nowhere near that of China and won't be for years to come. So a purely online sales model has its limitations. So I hope it is easy to see why Xiaomi is having a tough time. And I think their previously brilliant business strategy won't really help them much further. And instead, the question of whether or not this amazing Xiaomi miracle will continue will depend much more on how well they can deal with copycats like OnePlus and Le Echo, as well as more luxurious brands like Oppo, Huawei, and Vivo. 
In either case, I'll be here to report on it. So if you want to see more investigative tech videos like this one from my The Story Behind series, then make sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, like it and uh, follow me on social media because it's good for you and me, especially me. Bye-bye.